Deepak Abhil, you have Chetan with him, with you over there. He is a senior assistant editor of Space and Science at the Times of India. What are the odds that Chetan has that this will be a successful landing? We are all praying for it indeed, but uh, Chetan is someone who's covered uh, ISRO for a long time. What, is, what does he really think is going to happen? Well, uh, speaking to some of the scientists this morning, uh, Madhav, they've been maintaining that, you know, the mood is quite upbeat because, you know, be it scientists and uh, what, all the technological progress that ISRO has achieved from Chandrayaan 1, 2 and now at 3, all of them are working together to ensure that this mission is a success. Like you mentioned, Chetan, with me here from Times of India, Chetan, you've been covering, uh, you know, ISRO and everything related to what they've been achieving all these years. Uh, you know, at this point in time, in about 40 minutes from now, we're expecting the ALS to kick in. Uh, take us through these last moments, you know, because we've seen this happen during Chandrayaan 2 as well and we were here together that time where it was the last few seconds that you know there were small glitches what makes this uh, particular mission if we could say foolproof or can we even say you see no space mission is really uh, foolproof but I think this time uh, Vikram the lander has uh, greater chances of landing uh, you know safely the soft landing is most likely to happen because of all the preparations that ISRO has done over the last four years uh, some of the key things include, you know, uh, strengthening of Vikram's legs and adding redundancies in terms of, uh, you know, uh, software, algorithm, sensors. The algorithms, there's an, uh, you know, interesting uh, uh, improvement, wherein last time one of the key things that happened with Chandrayaan 2 was that when errors were uh, accumulated uh, during its fine uh, breaking phase and before it could, you know, uh, change its orientation into a vertical one, those errors were not... I mean, the system was not such that the errors get corrected immediately. Yeah. So by the time the correction started to kick in, it was a flurry of, you know, uh, corrections that were to happen. But uh, all the errors had accumulated and Vikram didn't have very, uh, you know, a lot of time. But this time uh, that has been addressed, corrections will happen, you know, almost real time. So I think uh, overall uh, ISRO is fairly confident and I think the confidence stems from all the preparations and they've, they've basically done everything that they could do. Yeah. And now uh, it's left to the moon, you know. Absolutely. And you know, uh, uh, Luna 25, uh, everyone thought, well, they've left after us, reached earlier, uh, you know, they're going to do it. But suddenly things went wrong. That's why they say, you know, there's zero error as, as far as space is concerned. So this time around, when you've been speaking to some of the scientists over the last couple of days, what have they been saying about, uh, you know, the entire preparation overall? You see, in the last couple of days, all that would have happened or all that could uh, be done is, is you know, uh, monitor the health of the spacecraft, the landing module, and keep doing checks and do simulations and see, uh, understand its location, you know, uh, to get uh, the exact location at the exact time. Those things are very right. important given how uh, the moon's, you know, rotation and influence of Earth and Sun. Yeah. It's just staying in the lunar orbit is, is a very complex uh, kind of a thing. And you could, yeah. Okay.